Well, praise the Lord. It's really good to be here today again in God's presence. And, um, well, it's good to talk about the supernatural as well, isn't it? Now, I hope you believe in the supernatural. Our funny thoughts going through your head now and say he's going off track. Well, no, actually, the Bible is a book of the supernatural. And there are many strange things in the Bible. That might shock some of you because you put it down to a normal book and you don't realize it's a book. It's the book of God and it's got supernatural happenings in it. Miracles, signs and wonders. And if we look into Ezekiel chapter 1, there are strange things there that you might read it and you think that's very strange. And you know, sometimes um, we can get to a place where we will not believe for the supernatural. It's all by faith, the kingdom of God. If you want to enter into the gifts of the Spirit and move in the realm of the supernatural, we have to believe. And obviously, all that happens in the supernatural will not contradict the Word of God. But when we look into the Word of God in Ezekiel uh, chapter 1, verse 10, we're reading about the cherubim. And I just wonder if some of us, because we're so critical of the supernatural, we're so critical of people speaking in tongues, people falling down under the power of the Spirit, people laying on the hands on the sick and raising the dead and doing and working all kinds of signs of wonders, seeing visions of angels and everything else, whether you would, you're not prepared for heaven. Because when you get to heaven, you're going to see some very strange things as well as people you'll recognize that have gone before you are born again. Remember, we can't enter there without repenting of our sin, believing in Jesus Christ, and uh, asking him into our lives to be our Lord and Savior. And so when we enter into heaven, when we get, we come round the throne of God, we're going to see the cherubim. And it says in verse 10, I've got time to read all the chapter, as for the likeness of their faces of the cherubim, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion. And on the right side, each of the four had the face of an ox. And on the left side, each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces. Their wings stretched upward. Two wings of each one touched one another and two covered their bodies. And then it speaks about, you know, he got this vision on this plane and with the cherubim there and and there were wheels as well and with and that the wheels were full of eyes and so on very strange happenings in that vision now if people got a vision like that today if somebody started speaking about a vision like that today they would be treated as antichrist anti-god anti-bible because there are so many critics out there today and don't get me wrong i understand that there are people who go over the top with the supernatural and start acting stupid and ridiculous. They, they start off having a bit of fun, you know, there's nothing wrong with laughing in the spirit. I've laughed in the spirit when I prayed all night one with some friends who were really tired in the morning and uh, we'd prayed all night. And what God did intoxicated us with the spirit in the morning, the Holy Spirit, and we started to laugh and we laughed our tiredness away. And if you've never laughed in the spirit, you're missing something really good. But, you know, let's not do away with the supernatural. Because I know there are extremes. There's people acting stupid and putting dog collars around people's neck with a, a lead on and, and he's going along on his hands and his wife's holding the, 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 the um, chain or whatever it is, the lead, and uh, they're just acting the goat. Yes, of course, it brings disrepute to the gospel and so on, but let's not uh, throw out the baby with the bathwater. Because let me tell you this, when I was um, invited to preach in a number of churches, when I was first starting out as a minister, I was invited to a church in, in Crewe in England. And uh, the, the minister at that time was, was Ron, Ron Hickley, and he, was, he had an apostolic ministry, and he invited me there to speak, and I preached the gospel uh, in the morning, I preached the word, and in the evening I preached. And uh, then I, I asked people to come forward for prayer for healing at the end of my preaching message. And this woman came forward, and just as she was approaching me, she fell on the floor. I didn't know what that was. Well, I did. I knew people fell under the power of the Spirit because I was brought up in a church that operated in that way. But I never laid hands on her. That was the power of God. Now, that wasn't the devil, like some of you are saying. People are falling under the power of the Spirit. That's of the devil. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. If it's done through born-again Christians, it's God, it's the Holy Spirit. And uh, 
and that was the beginning and then from there and whenever I ministered you know people would just be whacked out under the power of the spirit sometimes you know the, uh, I'd lay hands on them and they'd fall sometimes just speaking they'd fall on the floor and I could just run around and fall all over the place and that was the devil was it so you're saying I'm demon possessed I don't think so I'm an ordained minister of God I've been anointed by God been through the ranks as it were to be in this position to speak from God's word and I've been appointed by God to preach his word the truth and that was of God and it still is and I still believe God for the supernatural it says in the Bible those who believe in me they shall speak in tongues now, I don't know whether you speak in tongues. Are you one of those that is anti-tongues? Well, we put lots of videos on our YouTube site covering every angle because we've had all kinds of critics. But we've covered it all with good sound doctrine. So if you want, you'll see it uh, on our YouTube site. All the videos are put out on tongues. Uh, proving that tongues, it's quite clear in the Bible that tongues are... Paul the Apostle spoke in tongues. <laughs> How can you do away with tongues when Paul spoke in tongues and all the disciples? He said when the Spirit, even believers, you know, they'd never heard of tongues. And they believed in the Lord. They had salvation, but they hadn't got the baptism of the Spirit. And when he laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on. They spoke in tongues. And the Spirit gave utterance. And they started to prophesy. In other words, they'd entered into the doorway, into the supernatural. So those who believe will speak in tongues. And they'll enter into the supernatural, lay hands on the sick, they will cast out demons. And all kinds of wonderful things will happen. They will even have angelic visitations. But remember, whatever that angel might say or appear to you in that vision, and you will have visions and dreams, it will not contradict the word of God. And let me just finish with this because I could go on and on because my life has been one of the supernatural. Because I'm a believer and I want all God's got for me. I want to move more and more deeper and deeper into the waters of God, into the waters, into the realm of the supernatural. God is going to do great things today for those who will believe and go the whole hog all the way into the supernatural. So if you want to stand on the seashore for the rest of your life and criticize those that are, that's fine, but you're missing out on a big blessing because this water is the water of blessing. Let me finish with this. Revelation chapter 8, verse 13. And I looked and I heard, and, he, and I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the, of the, the trumpet of the three angels are about to sound. Now he was proclaiming there the, uh, the trumpet judgments of God. But do you know that angel, when we look into what that actually means, angel, it means eagle. Now the eagle is symbolic of prophecy. And, you know, many times, you know, in my life, uh, over the years, uh, when God wants to give me a prophecy, he's given me a vision of an eagle. It's almost like, a it's so real, it's like a real eagle is there. And then all of a sudden, an anointing comes upon me to prophesy. I've had that happen to me many times. The eagle in the Bible, and we, say, we see that at the beginning when I read it out of Ezekiel, is symbolic of prophecy. The eagle that rises far above everything else and sees all that's going on. He has a great range of view, of vision. And that's what it's speaking about, uh, prophecy and vision. And he saw that eagle flying through the midst of heaven. It was an eagle, supernatural being of God, an eagle, flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And in other words, Praise the Lord, warning the world of what is to come. And so, if you want to enter in, you must be a believer and, you know, stop resisting the Holy Spirit of God. There's nothing, if you want to receive the gift of tongues, if you want to learn to speak in tongues, if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've got to believe God. If you resist it and start criticizing you'll get nothing critics will receive nothing believers will get everything that's god god's got for them because it's all by faith thank you for listening today